Hi all, it's Mr. Rarely. Welcome to our first uh, video cast for light and sound um, for our Year 9 unit. Um, first thing we need to have a look at uh, going into this unit is waves and the way that we have different, different types of waves and how different energies such as light and sound travel in different waves and what they need and what they don't need. So when a, when a wave is made in a still lake um, by dropping a rock, in, rock into it, the wave spreads out. However, the particles of the water don't actually spread out. Um, they just move up and down. So um, much the same as when you're you know, on your surfboard surfing um, at the ocean. Good luck if you're surfing that wave there. Um, the energy is actually moving towards the shore, but the water particles themselves are actually moving up and down. Um, they're not so much moving forward. So you're actually surfing energy. You're not actually surfing the water. Um, as we go along, I'm going to have um, some highlighted words there. These are words that you're going to need to know uh, for your test later on in the year um, and for your exam for this unit. Um, so any one of these, um, you can pause on, have a look at it, and you can copy those down and put those into your textbook anytime you want, anytime you like. So the definition of a wave is just transmitter. It's a transmitter of energy without the movement of particles from place to place. The vibration of particles or energy fields is involved. Um, the material through which any wave travels through is called the medium or the plural is media. So um, for the pictures above, obviously the medium is water. Moving along. So when we talk about energy, there are two different types of waves. Um, we've got our transverse waves, which are waves involving the vibration of particles perpendicular to the direction of the energy transfer, which is basically the waves you see at the ocean. And what do we mean by... Um, perpendicular. Okay, so when we're talking about a, a transverse wave and perpendicular, um, there's an easy way to remember the name of a transverse wave in the way that the particles actually move and the way that the energy moves. So if we actually have a look at this little graph here and we can see that we've got the line going through the center. So if we can imagine that this is the ocean, this would be the ocean when it's dead flat. Um, and then we've got um, a wave moving through it. Um, so you've got, obviously at the top we'll have the crests and below we'll actually have the troughs. Um, and all that's happening is, if we actually have a look at our particles, our particles are moving up, up here, all right? And then if we have a look down here, this is the bottom of the trough. So they're actually, the waves are actually, the particles are actually moving down like this. So all they're doing is moving up and down almost on the spot but our energy transfer is actually moving along like that. And if you have a look at that, that's actually like a, a um, T on the side. So that's how you can remember that this is a transverse wave. And like I said, this is the wave that you're going to see at the ocean. Um, moving forward, there's another type of wave, which we've got a compression wave, um, which involves the vibration of particles in the same direction as the energy transfer. Now, a compression wave can also be, be known as a longitudinal wave, and it's also known as a mechanical wave. So what's the difference with the compression wave? So we've got the slinky here, and as you can see, I don't know whether you can just see this little area here, all right? This area here is what we would call a compression. The springs are actually compressed, all right? Um, and what happens with the slinky, and we'll do this in the class just to demonstrate it, what's going to happen is this compression this compression is going to keep going this way and as you can see in the bottom picture the compressions actually moved down here now um, so the compressions down in this part here so the actual particles in the wave are moving the same way that the energy is so the compression wave it's moving in the same way that the energy is all right and that's also why it's called a longitudinal wave so compression wave longitudinal wave. So when we're talking, the first thing we're going to look at is we're going to move into sound waves. Um, and like I already said, sound waves are a mechanical wave. And what does that mean? Um, we'll sort of have a look at that a little bit further on. 
um, what I mean by mechanical wave. It's a longitudinal wave, and with sound waves, frequency, or with sound, frequency um, is equal to pitch, and amplitude equals the loudness. Um, it's not quite that simple. Um, amplitude is, if we go back to that previous page and we had the troughs going up and down on the transverse wave, the amplitude is how far the particles move um, from their, their normal resting position. So if I put more energy into something, um, so if I was to slap, tap my hand very lightly on the desk, I'm not actually using much energy to make that noise. But if I was to slam down um, my hand onto the desk and make a really loud noise, I've exerted a whole heap of energy to do that. So the amplitude is actually how much energy is in the wave. And when that relates to sound, the more energy that's in a sound wave, the more vibration it creates within the air, which means the louder the sound is. So again, more some more um, um, definitions that you're going to have to know. Um, so a vibration is something that's just repeated fast and back in um, fast back and forth movements, and again is how actually how sound is made. A compression is a region in which the particles are closer than when not disturbed by a wave. So a little bit, you know, same as a transverse, they move up and down. The compression, they get closer together and they move along the wave in that um, pattern. And then we have a rare faction. So a rare faction um, is a region in which the particles are further apart than, than when not disturbed by a wave. Um, and we'll have a look a little bit uh, at that in the next couple of slides. So just a few more terms that we're going to have a look at. Frequency. So um, in the slide before I, had, I said that frequency relates to pitch um, and it does and we'll, we'll have a look at that in a minute. But the frequency is actually the number of vibrations in one second or the number of wave, wavelengths passing in one second. And if we have a look at um, this high frequency wave and this low frequency wave, the important part to note is if we have a look here to here on the low frequency wave and we were to come up to the high frequency wave here, um, the, the distance between the highs and the lows are the same for the low and the high frequency waves. What's actually changed though, if we have a look at this, um, this little graph here and we were to say that this was one second, our high frequency wave, there's more crests and troughs within that one second than there is within the low frequency wave. Um, and when we're looking at a high frequency sound, that's something like a scream. Um, and when you look at your low frequency wave, uh, that's something like you know your death metal rocker um, singing out his favorite tune. Now, we measure frequency in the unit of hertz. Um, so hertz is the unit of frequency. It's the abbreviation. The abbreviation is HZ and one hertz is equal to one vibration every second. So um, middle C that uh, you know most musicians would know, middle C has a frequency of 256 hertz. Um, and, and all that means is that there are 256 either vibrations every second or if we have a look at our um, little diagrams there, there'd be 256 uh, waves every second or um, wavelengths every second. So the pitch um, is the highness or the lowness of a sound and the pitch that you hear depends on the frequency of the vibrating air. So we know that frequency, um, if I have a high frequency um, wave as I have up the top there, I've got more hertz. So the higher the hertz, the higher the frequency, the higher the pitch. So your high pitch uh, sound where you're going to break that glass uh, is going to have lots and lots of uh, waves in that second. And again, your you, you know your death metal uh, raw 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 singer, he's not going to have that many um, wavelengths in a second. So again, looking at um, sound and wavelengths um, and a couple other things that we need to know. So wavelength is a distance between two neighboring crests or troughs of a wave, and this is the distance between two bar two particles vibrating in step. So if we have a look at the diagram there, 
Um, we've got the wavelength in the blue. So the wavelength um, is, you know, either from the, the bottom there, so the, the troughs of the wave. So it can be measured from one trough to the other or from one crest to another crest. Now the amplitude, as I spoke about before, is the maximum distance that a particle moves away from its undisturbed position. And again, we've got um, over here, we've got a soft sound and you can see if I was to make a really soft sound, it hasn't moved far from um, hasn't moved far from from the line. Whereas if we've got a sound that's slightly louder, it's actually moved further away. And of course, it's moved further away because there's been there's more energy within the wave. So the more energy that is exerted, um, the further the particles can move away from their undisturbed position. So amplitude. Uh, you know, for sound can measure how much sound is made, but importantly, amplitude is a measure of how much energy is within a sound. Um, and we've got our little uh, diagram over here where we've got our transverse wave, which looks like, you know, the waves that you'll see at the ocean. And then we've got here these sound waves. Um, now, what you see here is the little dots represent particles. Um, and you can see here that the particles are really close together. And where the particles are really close together here, that's what we call the, com the compression part of the compression wave. All right, and then here, just in this middle area here, um, you can see that they're really spread apart. And that, that part there is called a rarefaction. Um, so the rarefaction is where the particles have, um, you know, they're more spread out than what they would be normally. Um, and the compressions, of course, are where they're actually uh, compressed together. And the same as the, our transverse wave, we can, we can actually measure our wavelength um, from each of the compressions. So our wavelength is from there to there, or again, we can measure it from the middle of our rarefaction to the middle of our other rarefaction there. And as you can see, it matches the, uh, the one at the top. Okay, so where we've got our crests is our compression, where we've got our troughs, okay, on our, um, you know, wave like at the ocean, so our transverse wave is where our rarefactions are. Okay, just to um, go back over a few of the important terms that we've had, and um, so we've had um, our amplitude, which again, remember, is the amount of energy that is in the um, in a wave, whether it be a sound wave or any other type of wave, um, you've got your wavelength, which is the distance between um, either two crests of a transverse wave or two troughs of a transverse wave. And also, if we're looking at um, if we're looking at our uh, compression wave, it's the distance between the middle of two rarefactions or the middle of two um, compressions. Um, the frequency. So our frequency is the amount of wavelengths that will happen in an amount of time. So normally that is timed down to a second. Um, and as I said, middle C would be 256 vibrations or um, waves traveling through within that second. And we measure that frequency um, with the unit of hertz. So for... Uh, hertz is, you know, for every one second, however many vibrations, that is the amount of hertz. And the higher a frequency um, sound is, uh, the more, the, the higher the pitch. So frequency and pitch are related in that sense that the higher the frequency, the higher the pitch. So um, the more amount of waves that are coming through, the higher that sound is. Um, and when I mean high, I mean, you know, like you're screaming um, from Psycho or whatever movie that you like to, horror movie that you like to watch. Um, you know, that screaming girl, she's putting out a really high pitched sound. Um, whereas, you know, the example that I've given you, your death metal singer is going to have a very low frequency. Um, other things, compressions and rarefactions within... Um, a compression wave. Again, you can go back and have a look at those terms. Um, vibrations, you know, all sound is created by, by vibrations. And our waves, we've got a transverse wave, compression wave, um, and a compression wave is known as a longitudinal wave. 
So that wraps up um, this video and I'll see you for the second one. Thank you very much. Bye.